Hi, now here we have an example based around a continuous random variable x which has the following probability density function where a and b are constants and what we've got to do is show that 10a plus 25b equals 2. So if you would like to have a go at this, give you a moment just to pause the video, come back when ready and you can check your work solution with mine. Okay, so let's see how you got on if you had a go. Well, there's two ways that we can do a question like this, and I'll show you both of them. The universal way is to use integration. What we've got is that if we've got a probability density function, f of x, then the integral of f of x with respect to x, going between our limits 0 to 5, should always come to 1. We're essentially looking at the area under the graph, which represents the total probability, so it'll come to 1. Now, we know what f of x is. It's a plus bx over this interval. So, therefore, we've got the integral going from 0 to 5 of a plus bx integrated with respect to x is going to equal 1. And if we integrate this in the usual way, just by adding x onto the constant here, we get ax. And then for the bx, we add 1 to the power of x and get bx to the power 2. And we divide by the new power 2. And we've got our limits going from 0 to 5, and this should equal 1. We start now by substituting x as 5, so you've got a times 5, and then plus b times 5 squared, all over 2. And then we would subtract what we get when we substitute 0 in, and we're going to get 0 there and 0 there, so we just say take away 0, and that equals 1. Now if you multiply throughout by 2, we've got 5a here, so if you double that, you're going to get 10a. This is 25b over 2, times that by 2, and you're just left with 25b. And if you times the 1 by 2, you're going to get 2. Now I did say that there was another way that we could do this, and to appreciate this, it's just by drawing the probability density function, the graph of it. So if we've got our axes, x and f of x, it goes from 0 to 5. And once we're outside of the range 0 to 5, we're told that it's 0. OK, so we'll just mark that in there. But when x equals 0, you're going to get just simply a. So uh, if we mark on a as, say, being that value there, and then when x is 5, you're going to get a plus 5b, which is going to be a value more than the a here. So we'll just put that as a plus 5b. And so our graph is going to look something like this, going up to just above the 5 here. I'm going to drop that down onto the 5, like so. Now. What we can do is we can see that we've got a geometrical shape here, a trapezium. And we know that the area underneath the graph should come to 1. So working off the area of a trapezium idea, we can work it out like that. So the area of a trapezium, let's just put the area equals 1. okay? But the area of a trapezium is going to be the sum of the parallel sides multiplied by the distance between the parallel sides and divided by 2. So what we've got then is the sum of the parallel sides, so that's that one there, a, plus this side here, which is a length of a plus 5b. Okay, We multiply this by the distance between the two parallel sides, which is 5 units, and we divide the lot by 2. That's the area of a trapezium, and it equals 1 in this example. Now, if I multiply both sides by 2, 
I've therefore got the 5 on the outside here of this bracket which is a plus a which is 2a plus the 5b and that's going to equal 2 and if I expand the bracket we therefore have 10a plus 25b equals 2. So that's the way I prefer just when I get a simple geometrical shape but to be able to spot that you've got to sketch the probability density function and uh, if it's a straight line then you can use something like this. Okay.